Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome back to Air Radio Salgero Spain today, 24th January 2021, Monday, the beginning of the week. We now bring you the news from Banjul de Gambia. First, the headline, the first story on Standard Newspaper Assembly summons Hamad Ba over corruption allegations at GT Board. Then, PPP intends to keep two Banjul seats. Gambian announces intention to run for U.S. Congress. Social Security, Housing, Finance, Corporation move to bridge communication gaps with members. The Let me. The presidential advisor advises over poor inauguration ceremony. And then government assures justice in Gambia Petroleum Saka. And also court declares Omar Sajo's dismissal from army unlawful. So those are the stories from Standard. Let's see. Point news here. Point news here. But task force on petroleum on covert fraud malpractice then gambia peoples the students face learning losses over teachers absenteeism and then let me see whether this one is today yes commonwealth secretary general pledges full support to gambia the Point months demise of staff's wife. Let me see whether it's a new one. Yep. Barrow's second term targets rise raise self sufficient rise self sufficiency sensi food security. They said Barrow's second term targets. Rice, self sufficiency, food security, or hala. So, the other story Forum on China Africa Cooperation opens new chapter in China Gambia Trade Cooperation. The down the national news Shanghai Toro Village to hold cultural festival on Saturday. Grawa, G uh, C R A W A, Freeman Healthcare Foundation hands over medical items to public health facilities. Mary Gillen donates school furniture to Crab Island T V E T Center. So those are the national news also from point so let's go back to standard with the first story on top which is the headline of our story now our newscasting the assembly summons Hamad Ba over corruption allegations at GT board now the news in detail this one by Tabora Boydang standard reporter read by Hagelama Air Radio Sal Geruna Spain today in our studio here now the details. The National Assembly Public Petition Commission has summoned Tourism Minister Hamad Ba to report today as part of their investigations into allegations of corruption at the Gambia Tourism Board. The National Assembly Committee launched the inquiry following a petition by concerned staff accusing the minister. The former director general and finance director of various corrupt practices, including an award of contract for the construction of five ecotourism lodges. Minister Ba is expected to appear before the committee chaired by Fonyi Brevet Nam Sunkari Baji this morning. A former GTB director general Abdullah Hydra is also expected to testify. The officials will be asked to explain themselves with 
regard to the corruption allegations made in the contract process, wrongful and allocations within the TDA and abuse of power among others. According to the workers, their petition seems seen by the standard. The board in 2018 invited bids for the construction of these lodges to be built across the regions and five companies, namely Lair Group, Men Mendura Construction, BB Electrical and Construction, Peace Enterprise, Lamin Jata Eco Construction, and Santa Hiala Construction Company took part in the bidding. However, the petitioners allege that the GT board, former Director General Abdullah Hydra and former Director of Finance Usinu Senghor, now Guy CEO, engage in financial abuse to enrich themselves when they awarded the contract to Lair Group, which tendered at least 10 million higher than the rest of the bidders. The further alleged that following a mass resistance against the awarding of the contract to Lair Group, Director General Hydra and Finance Director Senghor, aided by Minister Ba and his permanent secretary, Kodu Jabang. Senghor, Kodu Jabang Senghor used the COVID-19 situation to send the staff home with a salary cut and in their absence subsequently signed the contract with Lair Group. They also accused Minister Hamad Ba of unilaterally removing the board chairman Abdullah Bax Toure following his reception of the aggravated staff's allegations promising to look into them. The staff further charged that they were surprised to hear Minister Ba announce at the launch of one of the eco lodges in Sotuma that a total of $97 million was agreed with the Lair Group for the construction of the five lodges with an advance payment of $38.5 million already made. The amount on the latest from GT Board, Gambia uh, Procurement GPP, GPPA, Gambia Procurement Authority, and the statement of the minister are conflicting and up to date. The actual contract signed with Lair Group has been kept away from the staff. We see this action of the Director of Finance as gross financial misconduct because the signing of this contract and payment of 38.5 million to Lair from GT Board accounts did not follow proper financial and audit procedures. The Director of Finance has had rather advised the contracts committee wrongly on the way they have evaluated the ecotourism projects and awarded the contract to Laird Group on the basis that this contract will pre-finance the project only to realize that this is not true, the petitioners allege. On other allegations of corruption, the staff also accuse Minister Ba of deviously co concealing out or cancelling out rather co a contract agreement made in 2014 between the GT board and Construct Company Limited. They said on the allegations of corruption, the staff also accused Minister Ba of deviously cancelling out a contract agreement made in 2014 between the GT board and 
Construct Company Limited. The agreement was for GT Board to allocate the land to Construct Company and in return, Construct Company to construct a head office complex for Gambia Tourism Board at Kololi next to the Jakaro football field. On the highway to Senegambia, now call the tropics. The office complex was supposed to house GT Board and Ministry of Tourism and Culture staff. However, sometimes in 2018, when the minister, the permanent secretary, the director general, and the director of finance travel abroad, they decided from there that GT Board would no longer occupy the office complex, but instead rented a place where the GT Board is currently located for three million dollars per annum. This decision sucks all GT Board staff who up to date cannot understand why they are paying such an amount on rent when they could have easily moved into the tropic complex. Equally, no one could tell if the framework agreement with construct company still exists. And there is rumor that the complex is now leased to construct company and the proceeds are shared between the minister, permanent secretary, director general, and director of finance. The staff allege Minister Ba, Minister Hamad Ba, is also accused of intervening to waive three percent from the levy. Support levy supposed to be paid, supposed to be paid by. Uh, Kai Yang Holding Group and allocation of land to Minister MOAB Capital. These allocations and waivers have led to the loss of over 454,000 in revenue. So it ends there. Stay tuned. Don't worry. We'll back momentarily after a short while in the in another story. Welcome back. Still with Standard News Ever, the headline government assaults justice in Gamperium saga. This one by Omar Ba, Standard Chief Reporter, read by Hajadama Air Radio Salger Spain. Now the details. A government multi sector tax force has recommended immediate legal action against individuals found culpable in the Gam Petroleum Fuel Saga. The task force which comprises Pura Gam Petroleum Board, Ministries of Trade, Petroleum and Security Services was instituted by the President in the wake of fuel shortage in the country in November last year. The Gambia government in a statement said, President Adam Barrow strongly assures Gambians and partners of his government on wavering commitment to routing of or routing out corruption and ensuring that fair and transparent business practices are upheld with equal opportunities for all in the country. This followed the 
presentation of a preliminary report of the findings of the task force to President Barrow early this month. Following the statement, the standard tried and was fortunate to come across more details of the preliminary findings of the task force, including many highlighted by the government's statement. According to the recommendations of the task force, the current management that has been interdicted by the board should be processed through the appropriate legal means in order to recover the unexplained stock issued immediately. The task force also recommended legal proceedings against all the oil marketing companies that have recognized negative stocks to recover the full value of the stock received but doesn't belong to them. The task force further recommend for the National Audit Office and AO do a snap audit to ascertain the position of GP at the time of takeover from Euro Africa Group. A foreign or, uh, audit should be carried out by an independent firm to determine the full extent of the losses, including any tax, any taxes that may be due to the state, the tax force said findings. The task force also found that all the four out of the five gas oil tanks of gum petroleum were empty. The 50 tank in fact contain the fifth tank rather the fifth tank contain only 5000 liters consisting of a mix of gas oil and water the stock of petrol as of 1st november 2021 was 910 metric tons and that of jet fuel was 4.200 Nine, that means 4,209 metric tons for the jet fuel. The international trade, trade, uh, traders who have stocks with gum petroleum reported that, that their total stock balances with gum petroleum were 9,643.54 empty metric tons of petrol. 16,000 534.69 metric ton of gas oil, 3,444.99 metric tons of jet fuel, and 17,793,015 metric tons of heavy fuel. The report added, the task force recommended for gum petroleum to settle the value of the stock of the international traders as agreed with all the three traders to ensure that they do not claim insurance. The task force said engagement with these international traders ADD, ADAX, ADD, AX, and TRAFIGURA, T-R-T-R-A-F-I-G-U-R-A, and PSTV, and local oil marketing companies and the reconciliation of information information received from the found information from their they found that their stocks information found there that their stock were missing at the depot the total value of products missing was 10,753 metric, metric tons of petrol and 20,245 metric tons of gas oil with total cumulative value of approximately 20 million, uh, 20,968 uh, 20, US dollars valued at plate price. If they are made to claim insurance. The insurance premium for petroleum products will be too high 
for the country and it will literally put the country on a black list, the task force said. It said the mission stocks were issued without any authorization and the value of this unaccounted stock at pump price, including duties, taxes throughout, etc., is 31.265.972 US dollars. That means 31,265.972. The project tax duty attached to this stock values is approximately 10,298.872, which needed to be certain if paid or not. The oversight of the depot operations was found to be weak and the legal framework as as embodied in the Petroleum Products Act was not implemented by Pura, the tax force added. The shareholding of GAM Petroleum consists of Social Security Housing Finance Corporation is 45.3%, Gambia Ports Authority GPA 14%, and GNPC 12.90%, and Star Oil 24.8%. The task force over the task force observed that the board members were not in touch with the operational realities of the company and there was no oversight role that the board provided to the management, especially on the stock level. According to findings, the GP management was not transparent as they provided misleading information and were not forthcoming with information during the review. The management of GAM Petroleum was allowing some OMCS to take fuel without the proper authorization and this caused the stock out as a number of OMCs were given stock of traders which does not belong to the depot but is only held on a custodian basis. The fuel stock reports submitted by the depot management according to the task force proved to be false and there was no independent review of the stock level. The task force further recommends that the current practice of elevating the second layer of management to oversee the operation of GAM Petroleum and the depot immediately halted as it is inconsistent with standards of best practice and a recipe on abated malpractices and o corporate fraud. It also recommends for the NAO to review the audit report by PKF to ascertain the position of GP at the time of the takeover from Euro Africa group. This NAO exercise should be followed by a forensic audit of gum petroleum by an independent firm to determine the full extent of the losses including and including any taxes that may be due to state. They said it ends there. Stay tuned, don't go, we'll be back momentarily after a short jingle with another story. Welcome back. Still with Standard Newspaper. Court declares Omar Sajo dismissal from army unlawful. This by Bruce Asemota from Standard. And read by Al Jalama Air Radio Saljeruna. Now the details. Justice F.A. Akimbonga, Akimboga rather, 
of the High Court in Banjul has declared that the termination of the service of Omar Sajo, a soldier, by the then Chief of Defense Staff CDS in 2017, was a clear contravention of the 1997 Constitution. The trial judge also declared the dismissal of, of Omar Sajo was a clear contravention of Section 33, one in bracket A and B of the Gambia Armed Forces Act, Chapter 19, Cap 101. The judge delivered this judgment in a civil matter filed by the applicant, Omar Sajo, against Chief of Defense Staff and the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Justice Aki Bonga told the court that Omar Sajo's mean contention is that he was enlist, enlisted into the armed forces on the 1st July 2005 and had his service terminated in 2017. Justice Akibonga stated that the chief of defense staff opposed the application and contended that Omar Sayo made false declaration on the enlistment form in order to get enlisted into the Gambia Armed Force. The trial judge stated that the section 33, one in bracket, and one in bracket A and B is plain and clear that, and clear that a person cannot be dismissed as a soldier based on a declaration made for enlistment, B, it false or otherwise, after three months of making the said declaration. Justice Akibonga pointed out that Omar Sayo wasn't given fair hearing and wasn't given opportunity to be heard before he was dismissed. He noted that his dismissal was contrary to the principle of neutral uh, justice and Section 24 of 1997 Constitution Justice Akibongo declared that the CDS does not have that power to dismiss the applicant in 2017 based on his declaration made on the 1st July 2005 for enlistment and by his dismissal was contrary to the law. So it ends there. So, so we'll stop here for the meantime. Let me see if this one is not a long story, I can attack it to it. So I can continue with it after a short jungle. Welcome back, still with Standard News, a presidential advisor. Apologize over poor inauguration ceremony. This one by Lamin Cham, Standard Editor and Reporter. Read by Hagiadam Ayar Yusal Yeronaspian, the Deputy Youth Presidential Advisor and key member of the National People's Party, has admitted that last Wednesday's inauguration ceremony of President Adam Barrow was not properly organized. Sheikh Mbalo's comments on Kerfatu's uh, the branch came after critics and even supporters of the president lamented that the relatively poor attendance and low key nature of event graced by eight African heads of state. Most members of the opposition said they were not invited and the APRC faction that back Barrow said they were only given 50 invitation cards and were not given any role in the organizing or organization of the ceremony rather. Confronted with these observations, Mr. Mbalo said a mistake was made when the entire organization was left to be led by civil servants. Since it was a national event, it was felt that it should be organized by a body led and comprising civil servants from the office of the vice president among others. The mistakes was it was not left in the hands of the NPP or its allies. The study, stadium would have been filled to capacity. 
I wanted to apologize to all our supporters and the nation as a whole. It could be been better. It could have been better rather when you have eight heads of state in town. Everyone should have been aware of the excitement in town, but that did not happen. We have to apologize, Mr. Mbalo said. However, according to Mr. Mbalo, President Barrow has used the occasion to put across a lot of positive in terms of his plans to heal the nation, reconcile everyone. He even extended a hand to the opposition to join him in running the country. That is very important and every Gambian should be proud that the country has emerged from the election in peace and harmony and a president who has declared that he is going to serve everybody whether you support him or not Mbalo said it ends us so here we are going to end our newscasting today because we were a bit of, we are a bit late for the newscasting that's why we we cannot uh, continue with uh, English language so we'll stay here for the meantime